Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Maeve and it's been a while since I did a voiceover or appeared on camera and obviously I'm still not on camera, I'm just doing a voiceover, but uh, it is nice to finally find some time to sit down and record something with a microphone for my YouTube channel. Uh, I really haven't had a lot of time to make videos lately, um, but you didn't come here to hear any of that. You came here to watch me do this speed build. Well, it's not really a speed build, is it? It's um, it's house flipping. It's uh, it's basically a fix me little Simsy challenge. And if you're not familiar, Little Simsy is a pretty famous YouTuber in the Sims community, and she has a hashtag called Fix Me Little Simsy. And uh, basically, people will make these abandoned builds. Um, they're usually homes, but not always. And uh, she will go in and do what you can see I'm doing here, which is basically to renovate that build. Um, so the first thing that I do is, um, and this is the first thing that she does also, is uh, come in here and just delete all the trash. And I think at this point, I um, there had been an update recently and I didn't have any of my mods installed. So there are some debug items, uh, which are basically like, like cheat items, like items you can unlock using cheat codes. And um, whoever built this, a lot of people, um, when when they make these abandoned homes, they include these debug items. And because I didn't have my cheats enabled, I had to get my test sim to go through and pick up some of these trash items because they're debug, they're meant for gameplay and not for building. So when you're in build mode, you can't interact with them. Um, so anyway, um, that's, that's what I'm doing now is just like deleting all the things that I know I want to get rid of. And when I'm renovating a home, I try to keep it in the same spirit of, you know, in which it was built, right? So um, I'm kind of deciding like where was this toilet supposed to go because toilets typically are not located in the center they're usually against a wall because that's where the plumbing goes into uh, so uh, everything I'm kind of trying to keep in its original spot because I want my renovation to be as realistic as I can get it in the sims uh, so that's why you see I left that pipe in the wall in the kitchen because at this point I wasn't sure what direction I wanted to go with my renovation and I thought that the exposed pipe might be nice in like an industrial style build uh, but I ended up not going in that direction because the home is so small and you know for an industrial build it's usually um, like a larger type of building it's usually not something so small <laughs> so um, and now I'm just going through and deciding what do I want the floor plan to be um, because obviously I'm, I'm trying to work with you know what's already in there but then obviously the previous builder has left a lot open to interpretation so uh, you know, this is a very small yet open floor plan. So I don't want to separate that out because it's going to make the build feel even smaller than it actually is. So I know I want to keep that open, uh, which means that this is going to have kind of like a college dorm sort of feel just because it's so tiny and like the kitchen and living room are all together. Uh, one thing that, you know, if I had built this home, I would have done differently is I would have connected the bathroom to the bedroom since there is only one bedroom and one bathroom. Um, I would have put them adjacent to each other and then had like one door from the bedroom into the bathroom and then another door from the living room into the bathroom. That's just the way that I like to build things. Um, it, it just would have helped, I think, with sort of the flow of the apartment because, well, it's not an apartment, it's a home, a house. Um, but I just think that would have helped a little bit. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about while it's happening on the screen is you'll notice that I kept a lot of the items from the original build. So a lot of stuff that was like scattered around as, uh, you know, what we would consider the trash that I was clearing out. Um, some of these things didn't really look like trash to me and so I decided to keep them and incorporate them into the build. 
Um, so that's, you know, what you see these tires with the plants in the middle and like that wheelbarrow. I decided to use those as like part of the landscaping, although I do eventually delete those tires um, because there were just so many of them and they were kind of overwhelming and I didn't want the uh, finished build to be too cluttered. But yeah, I feel like um, when you're doing a renovation and you keep some of these original items that were used in, you know, the original build that you started with, uh, then the home kind of keeps some of its character. Um, and I did sort of the same thing with the paint, as you can see here, is I, I used the same wallpaper, but I just changed the color. Uh, just to give the impression that like we kept the exterior mostly the same, but uh, You know, we just freshened up the paint job basically and I'm also replacing the windows here Just because I think the brown wood looks very dated and I also don't necessarily like the brown wood tones against um, That like light blue color. Uh, I think the white just looks a lot nicer and newer Anyway, so this home is going to end up being a very good starter home for the type of Sim who is really into gardening. So I did put like a little gardening area outside. Um, it's also probably pretty good for like a maker Sim because there is that wood crafting table. Um, I do really like how I ended up doing the floor plan. I think it's a pretty good use of space considering that like, you know, it can be hard to figure out a floor plan for such a small home when like the doors in the main living space are placed the way that they were in this build. Um, because, you know, to separate the kitchen from the dining from the living areas, uh, it's usually helpful to like um, you know, one side of the room is the kitchen and the other side of the room is the living space and then the dining would be like somewhere in between there, right? Um, but with having doors on, um, you know, right now we have doors on two of the walls, but I'm actually going to add a third door because um, every home should have a front entrance and a back entrance. Um, and that's not like my philosophical feelings, but like, I mean, I don't know how it is in other countries, but in the United States, that's like a requirement for every home. Like if you don't have two entrances to your home somewhere, then your house is not up to code because it's a fire safety risk. So, um, I did go ahead and add that back door as you can see. And so now we're like up to code. Um, but now it's going to be really difficult. As you can see, I'm trying to figure out like, where is the living space going to go if, you know, the refrigerator and the oven and everything are on this specific wall and I don't want to move them because in real life you wouldn't. Um, and so I'm kind of experimenting here and I think this is actually where I end up putting like the couch and the TV. Um, and now I'm just trying to decide about... Um, some of the other spaces in the home. So we're looking at the bathroom now and um, I think the washer and dryer were actually like already included in the build um, but they were like maybe sitting outside the home somewhere as like part of the trash but um, I ended up bringing them in and hooking them up in the bathroom. Um, I was really surprised that the bathroom has so many tiles in a home that has so few total tiles. Uh, and so that's why I ended up kind of like sectioning off the toilet into a separate room um, Just because that's the way I prefer a bathroom to be that way Like if if someone is using the toilet someone else can still come in and use the sink or the washer and the dryer if they need to um, so that was just a matter of function and um, I think the bathroom ended up really cute actually actually this entire home I thought was really cute and Definitely the kind of place that I would have liked to have lived when I was single if I hadn't had like a million roommates. <laughs> um, and uh, the back porch too, I think ended up really cute. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that I added that back entrance and the back porch and everything. Um, also, I don't know if you saw earlier, um, but the person who previously designed this build, uh, like the abandoned version, they included like a little 
like a dog gravestone and like a little grim reaper model sculpture thing um and so i ended up putting those outside so like if you move your sim in here i'm kind of curious because i haven't tested it like is there gonna be like a ghost pet in this home if you move your sim into it or um is that like just a debug decoration i'm really not sure like i don't know like the previous person who built this did they just pull that gravestone from the debug menu or did they actually have a sim living here with their dog at some point and the dog died i'm really curious to know and like i also don't know if you have a gravestone from the debug menu um and it's not like a gravestone that is the result of a sim or a pet that died does it still even generate a ghost i have no idea so i'm really curious about all of that uh so i don't know maybe i should actually like move a sim into this build and test that out um but i just i really enjoy building so much more than i enjoy playing the game i do play a little bit just because um i want my builds to look realistic um but i also want them to be functional for gameplay because then otherwise like what is the point of downloading it <laughs> um anyway so now we're in the bedroom and uh i couldn't fit a double bed in here so i put like a twin size and then i put like a desk underneath so you have like this study space and i did include a laptop um i don't remember what my like budgeting rule for this build was because like for all the rest of the homes that I've done so far, and I'm I'm working on the fourth one at this point, and this is the first one. And I know that after I completed this build and I moved on to the rest of them, um, I didn't use any money cheats, so I was literally just working with whatever money my sim had after moving out of the previous renovation so it's literally like i have one sim and i moved her into this home and i flipped this home and then i moved her out and i moved her into the next home and i'm not really playing this sim um although i am like keeping her needs up mostly <laughs> but um i'm really the reason i have a sim like a playable sim that I'm moving into these homes uh, is just so I can test the layout when um, certain things are very close to each other. I want to make sure that there's room uh, for your sim to move around in that home and actually use everything that I've placed in it. Um, but so what I don't remember is, uh, you know, did I use the money cheat for this build or did I stay within a budget of like what my sim had? So I don't remember as far as this build is concerned, but for all of my future builds um, after this one in, in this save where I have all these abandoned homes in Newcrest, um, I'm on the fourth one and I know that for builds two, three, and four, I've been trying to stay within the budget of what my sim has. Uh, so this build, I mean, it could be that I turned on free real estate, um, which I think I did that for all of them. I turned on free real estate just so that my sim could afford to like move in there. Um, and then like, you know, whatever money I get from deleting the items that are on that lot that I'm not going to use, uh, that's my budget for that, for that renovation. And so I just don't remember if I followed that rule for this first one, cause it seems like I spent kind of a lot of money on this renovation, but maybe I didn't, maybe like, I mean, I don't know how much things are worth in the Sims. Like I don't pay attention to the Sims economy. I don't know uh, how much it costs to place a door or a window or a couch or a lamp. I just place it. Like I don't really think about it. Um, I do sort of like watch how much money I have left, um, but I'm not really budgeting as I'm building and so then like towards the end of a build when I am budgeting I tend to like not know how to finish it up because I run out of money too fast sometimes <laughs> um and you'll definitely notice that when I get to Newcrest renovation number three 
uh, because that is exactly what happened. I ran out of money and then like, I mean, the layout ended up being really cool, but I didn't get to like really decorate it or add any kind of clutter or do very much with the landscaping because I ran out of money towards the end of that build. <laughs> but we're not on that build right now. We're on this build, Newcrest renovation number one. And, uh, now I'm starting to like decorate a little more. You can see I, um, put in some new flooring. I painted the interior walls. Um, things are really starting to come together. And um, before too long, you're gonna see me start working on the exterior, like the landscaping and stuff like that. Uh, this is really like the most fun part of the build, in my opinion. Um, the challenging part is figuring out what you want the layout to be. Uh, sometimes it can also be a challenge to figure out a color scheme just because um, The Sims 4 is a little bit limited, like you only have a limited number of swatches for each item. And sometimes like the shape and texture of two items really go well together, uh, but it can be hard to tie in the colors. But uh, I think I did a good job on this one. I used a lot of like, um, you know, for the interior, I used a lot of like pinkish, tan, and cream colors. Uh, and then I, I really love like pinkish tones with teal tones. And so that's why I picked the curtains that you can see here. Uh, I really love this tile pattern, which I think came with... Um, Oh, what is it called? Was it like toddlers or generations or something like that? I don't, I don't remember. I know it's from a pack that's been out for a pretty long time uh, because it's one of the first packs that I ever bought and I started playing a couple years ago. Um, but yeah, so I have like these like pinkish with the wood tones and the teal color and like the gray and silver. Um, so it's definitely a very cool color scheme but because i used these like creams and i do have some hints of warmth in here like you know a few a few hints of you know light yellow um, like the lamps for instance and i'm gonna add some more of those warm tones you know as it goes on but um it doesn't look too icy um, I think sometimes when you're doing a cool toned color scheme, uh, the room can end up looking really like cold and uninviting. And uh, I managed for that to not happen in this build. I actually think it looks really like cozy and it is a small house, but it's not like cramped or anything. I think it's like nice and cozy and clean. Uh, so I would definitely live here. I think, um, now my house in real life is actually much bigger than this. <laughs> uh, and, and I only share it with, you know, my husband and our two cats. But, uh, if I was single and, you know, could sleep in, in a single bed, you know, or a twin size bed, uh, then this is definitely the type of place that I would want to live in. I think it's really cute. And like I said, very cozy very clean and um now we're looking at the outside and i think i'm finally about to do like some of the exterior the landscaping um i always like to throw in a grill on the outside of a home i realize that like in real life not everyone has a grill but in my sim neighborhoods everyone has a grill <laughs> Uh, and usually like a picnic table or like some kind of outdoor seating as well. And so that's usually where I start is like, where's the outdoor dining going to go? Or like the outdoor seating space going to go? Because, um, I don't know, for some reason, I really, I like having a lot of outdoor space, like a lot of outdoor recreational space. And especially when you have such a small home. Um, it can really like open up the living space to have outdoor spaces that your Sims can still use um, so that you don't feel limited to like just what you can fit on the inside of the home. So I think that's great that we have like, you know, we have an outdoor sitting area, we have an outdoor grill. Um, as you can see, I'm working on the outdoor uh, gardening area right here and um, what else? Oh yeah, the, the wood crafting table. Um, so I think this is just 
such a cute build and I really love what I've done with it and I hope that the person who created like the original build will see this and appreciate what I've done with it because like I said earlier uh, I really enjoy taking a home and renovating it but still leaving some of that original character um, one thing that I also like to do is use kind of the same plants that were included in the original build and I also tend to use plants out of the debug or like live edit objects menu um, because those are the plants that they use for like the part of the world that's not on the actual grid of your lot where you can edit so like you know all the plants that you're seeing that are not um, on that grid that you see there on the ground um, those are all from the live edit or debug menu uh, and so when you use those plants it helps your build um, to blend in with the world around it um, just so that it looks a little more realistic that way and another benefit of using plants from debug and live edit objects is um, because they're basically like cheat objects uh, they don't cost any money so you're basically like getting a steep discount on your um, landscaping costs because you're using these items from the debug and live edit objects menu so um, I know in the beginning of the video I said I didn't have my cheats enabled but I actually started this renovation months ago and then I took a break from the sims and uh, then I came back and I, you know, installed my mods and I also installed a whole bunch of new DLC um, because, it, you know, in the beginning of this video, I didn't have all the packs and by the end of this video, I do have all the packs. Uh, so then I ended up coming in and uh, doing even more decorating on the interior um, because the first time around when I was working on this several months ago, I really kind of got stuck because I didn't know how to fill in some of the empty spaces here and then when I came back I kind of had like a fresh mind and was able to kind of you know touch up some things here and there and add a few things where I wasn't sure before what I wanted to do and that's what you're watching now is uh, where I'm just kind of like putting in some finishing touches uh, I kind of looked around and realized that I didn't have any plants in this build which is so unlike me I mean I'm not talking about like exterior landscaping but like on the interior I usually like to have some plants I think they really like um, they literally make a room look more alive <laughs> Uh, so I always like to include some plants on the interior. Sometimes I even go a little bit overboard, but I don't think I did that this time. Uh, not because I didn't want to, but because I kind of wanted to finish up this build and get into a fresh one. And uh, I get that way with every build I ever work on. I'm excited in the beginning and then I work on it for a really long time because I'm very detail oriented. and then towards the end I start to get really tired of looking at that same build and I want to work on something else and that's why I actually have like I think three unfinished builds um, where I have like the recorded footage in a folder on my external hard drive and um, I need to like go in and finish those builds and edit them down and um, you know make them into videos that you can watch and even one of them is a build that I've been doing in three parts so you've seen if, if you've been watching all the videos on my channel you've seen um, parts one and two of this build and I still haven't finished it and I'm talking about my Gotham City Sirens penthouse so I did like a create a sim video where I made um, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn and then I made them or I've been making them a penthouse in San Machuno and um, that penthouse is still unfinished like I'm almost done with it I finished the shell 
I have completed the first and second floors, but I'm still working on the third floor and I feel like I may never finish it, even though all it really needs is the finishing touches and then I would be done. Like all the hard part of this build is done, uh, but I just don't feel like looking at it and that's why you still haven't seen part three of that build and also why you haven't seen like a tour of that build um, because I'm still not done with it and like I started that like a year ago <laughs> and I'm still not done with it. Um, but I have a couple other builds too that I started ages ago and then I put them on the back burner because I wanted to work on something else and then I never came back to them. And that's what's so great about these renovations is that they're a lot less time consuming. They're a lot easier to edit them down and like get them into like a 30 minute time frame, something that I think people would wanna watch. Uh, whereas, you know, my other builds that I create from scratch, especially something as big as that penthouse that I was working on, I mean, it's a mansion, you know? Um, and so that's what makes these renovations so much easier for me is that they're quicker, I don't get tired of them as quickly, and they're a lot easier to edit. Anyway, we're gonna get into the after shots of this build. You're gonna get to see, you know, the finished product. I'm gonna fly through it the same way that I toured it at the beginning of this video. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and go so you can watch that without my voiceover on the top of it. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, subscribers, thank you so much for sticking with me during this kind of dry spell when I have not been putting out Sims videos. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate anyone who tunes in to watch my videos. And um, I guess that's all I have to say for right now. So, um, you know, like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate that too. And uh, uh, I look forward to seeing you again in my next video, and hopefully I can get back to creating videos a little more regularly. But um, yeah, that's it. I hope you have a wonderful day. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Always remember to stay hydrated, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.